Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Luis, and today we're going to explore one of the most fascinating studies in psychology, Dement and Kleitman's 1957 research on sleep and dreaming. This study was part of the biological approach to psychology, and it helped scientists understand what happens inside the brain while we're asleep, especially when we dream. The researchers wanted to find out if there was a connection between the way our eyes move during sleep and the dreams we have. More specifically, they aimed to answer three questions. First, do people remember dreams more often when they are woken during REM sleep compared to non-REM sleep? Second, is there a relationship between how long someone has been in REM sleep and how long they think they've been dreaming? And third, do the patterns of eye movement match the content of the dreams? Before we look at the study, let's explain two very important terms. REM sleep stands for rapid eye movement sleep. This is a stage of sleep where your eyes move quickly under your eyelids and it's strongly linked to vivid dreams. On the other hand, NREM sleep means non-rapid eye movement sleep. This is a quieter stage where the eyes don't move and dreaming is much less likely. During a typical night, your body goes through a cycle of REM and NREM sleep about every 90 minutes. This repeating pattern is known as an ultradian rhythm. In earlier research, Asarinsky and Kleitman found that people woken during REM sleep were more likely to report dreams. Dement and Kleitman wanted to explore this idea further, using both machines to record brain activity and reports from the participants themselves. In total, there were nine adult participants in the study. Seven of them were men and two were women. Five of these participants were studied in detail, while the other four were included later to confirm the results. To measure brain and eye activity, the researchers used two machines. The EEG, which stands for electroencephalogram, recorded the participants' brain waves and showed what stage of sleep they were in. The EOG, or electrooculogram, measured eye movements and helped detect whether the eyes were moving and in which direction. Electrodes were placed on the scalp and beside the eyes and these were connected to the machines with wires so that the data could be recorded during sleep. This was a laboratory experiment using a repeated measures design. This means that each participant took part in all conditions of the experiment. The researchers used different variables depending on the question they were trying to answer. For example, one independent variable was whether the person was woken during REM or NRM sleep. Another was the length of the REM period. The dependent variables were what the participants reported, whether they remembered a dream, how long they believed they had been dreaming, and whether their dreams matched their eye movements. Uh, participants came to the sleep lab and followed their usual bedtime routine. They were not allowed to drink alcohol or caffeine on the day of the study. Once in the lab, they went to sleep in a quiet, dark room. Electrodes were attached to their heads and faces using wires connected to the EEG and EOG machines. During the night, they were woken up at different times by the sound of a doorbell. Right after waking up, they were asked if they had been dreaming. If they said yes, they were asked to describe the dream out loud, and their voice was recorded. Sometimes the researcher would ask a few questions afterward, but in general there was very little interaction. For some trials, participants were asked to estimate whether they had been dreaming for 5 minutes or 15 minutes. This was done to compare the length of REM activity on the EEG with their own sense of time in the dream. In other trials, participants were woken after the researchers observed a specific pattern of eye movements, like vertical or horizontal movement, to see if the dream matched that pattern. The results showed that people were much more likely to remember a dream if they were woken during REM sleep. In fact, 79.6% of REM awakenings led to dream recall. On the other hand, only 6.9% of awakenings from NREM sleep resulted in remembered dreams. This confirmed a strong connection between REM sleep and dreaming. Participants were also able to estimate dream length with a high level of accuracy. When asked whether they had been dreaming for 5 or 15 minutes, most of them got it right. For example, one participant named WD guessed correctly 13 out of 14 times. This suggested that 
dreams might happen in real time, not just in quick flashes. One of the most interesting findings came from the analysis of eye movements. In many cases, the direction of the eye movements matched what the participant described in their dream. For example, one participant showed vertical eye movements and then reported dreaming about climbing a ladder. Another had horizontal eye movements and described watching two people throw tomatoes at each other. When the eye movements were mixed, the dreams were often more complex, like looking at groups of people or moving through a scene. Dement and Kleitman concluded that dreaming is strongly connected to REM sleep. They also found that people can estimate how long they were dreaming and that eye movements seemed to match the content of the dream. This supported the idea that dreams might unfold like real-life events in real time. The study had several strengths. First, it used objective data from machines like the EEG and EOG, which made the results more reliable. Second, the experiment took place in a controlled environment, which helped reduce variables that might affect the outcome. Finally, the researchers collected both quantitative data, like the number of dreams and minutes spent in REM, and qualitative data, such as the content of the dreams. However, there were also some weaknesses. Sleeping in a lab with wires attached to your head is not a natural experience, so the study had low ecological validity. The sample was small and not very diverse, only nine people took part and most were men. Also, even though participants describe their dreams, memory is not always accurate and some dreams might have been forgotten or misunderstood. One ethical issue was the use of deception. One participant referred to as WD was misled about when he would be woken up. Also, not all participants were fully aware of when or why they would be woken, which means informed consent may not have been complete. However, this was done to keep the results accurate and reduce demand characteristics. For your exam, remember the key details. There were nine adult participants. EEG measured brain waves, EOG recorded eye movement, the design was repeated measures, most dreams were recalled during REM, and the study used both qualitative and quantitative data. Dement and Kleitman's study changed the way we think about sleep and dreams. It showed us that dreams are not random, they are connected to real biological activity in the brain and eyes. In the next lesson, we'll move from dreams to monkeys and explore how hormones might influence behavior in the study by Hassett et al. See you then, and until that time, sweet dreams.